Sorry, this is the first live chat we've done. Uh, um, so I guess I'll do a quick round of introductions, explain why we're all here. I got in touch with Mark Collett. Some of you will be aware of him, others won't. Mark Collett is one of the leading figures in the alt-right, I'd say in the UK. Hopefully that's a, a fair statement, Mark. Um, and there's a lot of, from our perspective, from the Jewish or Zionist perspective, there's a lot of misinformation um, and a lot of things that are said about Jews and Zionists. And there's very rarely the forum to challenge or question some of those um, ideas that are uh, prolific on the, on the far right side of British politics or global politics in the, the global village. Um, so I want this to be a civil discussion. Um, Mark didn't have to take part in the chat. And what I've asked both sides to do, so the debate is going to be framed around, should Zionists support a white ethno state? Um, that's the subject of the debate. I've asked Rafi from Northwest Friends of Israel and Mark to prepare two, um, I guess, cases. Um, one for why Jews should support a white ethno state. And on Rafi's side, I've asked him for why Jews shouldn't support a white ethno state. So I guess the first thing we'll do is both of those will give their introductory um, comments and then we'll open the, the conversation up to everyone. So on the live chat today, we've got Brian of London, um, probably best known as Tommy Robinson's Zionist mate. We've got Judas, Judas Maccabeus, um, who is, I don't know how best to describe him. He's ex IBF, an ex rabbi, and um, engages frequently with those on the more right side of politics. And we've got Rafi Bloom of Northwest Friends of Israel. And we've got my mate Ralph, um, who I think is probably further to the right of Mark Collett on the on the live stream. So it should be an interesting panel. And myself, Joseph Cohen from the Israel Advocacy Movement, who are hosting the chat. Cool. So I guess I'll pass it over to you, Mark, to introduce yourself and put forward your case. Okay. Well, firstly, I'd like to say thank you for inviting me on. I always think that uh, peaceful discourse and talking about things in an open and free manner is the best way to deal with any issue. And I want to make it very clear that I do not advocate any forms of violence, nor will I be advocating for violence or anything else illegal during this stream. So I will begin. Jewish people have a homeland. They have a Jewish state, the state of Israel, a place where their interests, their culture, their traditions, and their ways of life are put first. And Jews protect that homeland and enforce its borders. The vast majority of Jews, both here in Britain and the world over, support the state of Israel. In fact, the British Board of Deputies, the most powerful Jewish group in the United Kingdom, states that 95% of UK Jews have visited Israel and that 90% view Israel as the ancestral homeland of the Jewish people. In America, the numbers are very similar. And the most powerful Jewish organizations in the US, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, works tirelessly to influence American politics in order to ensure US support for Israel. Yet despite the overwhelming majority of Jews supporting the Jewish state, and many Jews who live in the West actively campaigning for Western nations to support that state, Often, the very same Jews are actively opposed to those of European descent having states that promote the interests of the European people in the same way that Israel promotes the interests of Jewish people. But many Jews in the West, in fact, go further and have actively played a role in industries and endeavors that have harmed European societies, pushed anti-white narratives and undermined Western civilization. And it is this hypocrisy that I want to highlight. Jews are disproportionately involved in various media, including Hollywood, the press, and the porn industry. They are also overrepresented in banking and campaign finance, and vastly overrepresented when it comes to pushing for mass immigration, multiculturalism, feminism, and other anti-family practices. They were also the people behind communism, 
the most destructive ideology in history, and more recently, they were the founding fathers of what is known as cultural Marxism. What's more, constant lobbying by Jewish groups has distorted Western foreign policy and pushed for the West's involvement in wars in the Middle East and for hostility towards Russia. But whilst Jews have pushed for pornography, mass immigration, open borders, miscegenation, and anti-family practices in the West, they have done the exact opposite in Israel. Israel is, of course, a walled ethnostate, where migration is strictly controlled, where interfaith and same-sex marriage is not legal, and where the state seeks to ban material such as pornography that Jews have been instrumental in promoting in the West. But what really adds insult to injury is that Jews in Western nations constantly agitate to restrict freedom of speech and deplatform those who dare speak about the issues I have mentioned tonight. Jewish groups have lobbied Western governments to criminalize speech that is critical of Zionism or the state of Israel under so-called anti-Semitism laws. How ironic that those in Western nations will have the right to criticize their own nations but won't have the right to criticize a foreign nation, the Jewish state of Israel. Now, when I say Jews, I clearly do not mean all Jews, so I hope I won't be mischaracterized. But Jews do have an extreme in-group preference, and there's nothing wrong with that. All peoples of the world have the right to in-group preference, but the issue here is that despite the extreme in-group preference within the Jewish community, Many Jews actively work to undermine the in-group preference of other groups and have repeatedly been involved in practices that have had a hugely negative impact on the culture, heritage and traditions of those of European descent. Tonight, I will say that we, as people of European descent, have a right to exist. We have the right to defend our borders and the right to speak freely and openly about activities and practices of foreign entities. Sorry, okay, Rafi, I guess I'll hand it over to you for your opening remarks. Okay, good evening everybody. Um, let me start by just addressing the, um, the white ethnostate argument first and then I'll, I'll come on to Israel. Uh, listen, let's be very clear about it. Um, a white ethnostate is simply a racist ideology that's no different to the Nazis. Um, those who advocate for it um, are nothing more, in my opinion, than dangerous racists. I mean, how would they achieve this white ethnostate? Would they, for example, what would they do, for example, with the 20% of the UK population that's not white? You know, not maybe they'll, they'll answer that later on in this debate. Um, how would they handle it? Would it be forcible transfer? Would it be concentration camps? Because really the only way that their concept would work would be through extreme violence. And that really is what they're all about, the violent removal of all non-whites from the UK because it wouldn't work in any other way. And as we've just heard, the, the alt-right often uses Israel as an example of an ethnocracy. But that's, they use that disingenuously to make their case for one in the UK or the USA. But it's built on lies. Israel is nowhere near being an ethnocracy. Uh, for a start, Israel Jews are, Israeli Jews are white, black, and brown, hardly a state of pure color. 20% of its population are not Jewish, yet retain the exact same democratic rights as Jewish Israelis. And even further, if you know anything about Israel, those minorities, for example, such as Israeli Arabs, use their own language, Arabic, in their own school system, and even have their own Sharia courts. How can that be an ethnocracy? We can go even further and we can say that the Supreme Court judge that sent President Katsav to jail, the Israeli president, was an Israeli Arab. And furthermore, let's not forget that Judaism allowed conversion. You could be Chinese and have yellow skin, and if you converted to Judaism in the approved way, you could become an Israeli citizen. No, Harvard you could become an Israeli citizen. Sorry? <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. Mark can become an Israeli citizen in a week if he converted. There's no it's hardly, hardly, it's hardly a racial ethnocracy. You can be a different color uh, to, to a white person. You, you know, the Israelis are black, brown, uh, white, all different colors. And whilst we're talking about, let me just address the comment that you made about single-sex marriages. And let's be just, let me just remind our viewers that 
The UK only legalized same-sex civil marriages three years ago. Israel might not be there yet, and I personally believe they should legalize it. But let's not forget that they have the, they have the largest gay, gay pride parade probably of anywhere in the world. And the point about Jews, only Jews having the right of return. So let's answer that one too. One of the reasons that Israel exists is because of the white ethno state that existed in Europe in the last century in Germany. That worked well for the Jews, didn't it? Every time someone has floated the idea of a white ethno state, its Jewish population has suffered murder and dispossession. We've suffered 2,000 years of persecution, and in more frequent times, we've got Russia, we've got Nazi Germany, we could go on. And when we talk about communism, to say that the Jews invented communism is just ridiculous, because let's be clear, the communists murdered more Jews than anybody in, after the Nazis in recent times. They subjugated the Jews. They made them lose their jobs for being Jewish. Jews had to hide their religion and their practice when they were, were during communism. So that's just a nonsense. So we could go on. But you ask yourself, why does Israel exist? It exists simply as a safe haven for Jews because of people like the alt and far right. And even within that, Israel's minorities, as we said at the top, are protected. They play active and meaningful roles as full citizens in every part of society. Israel is the only liberal democracy in the Middle East, and that's a fact. Okay, so what we'll do now, we'll open the, the floor up for everyone else that's on the Hangout to respond to the two opening comments. Uh, who'd like to start? I'd just like to say, I, I don't know what I... I don't know what I expected or what shocks me more. The, the, the bare-faced lies or the fact that you manage to speak these lies with such a straight face and pretending that you are the victim. I mean, how dare you claim that Israel is not an ethno state? I'll read this from the Jerusalem Post. Chief Rabbinate admits using DNA tests to help determine Jewish status. And that's from the Jerusalem Post. The rabbis actually use DNA tests to decide who can get married in Israel. And you have the gall to tell me that you're against supremacy. And this is a state where you can run and hide from the alt-right and from racism. So Israel you, is probably the most racist state on the planet. And it's founded on the deaths of the Palestinian people. So how do you explain the fact that 20% of Israel's citizens are not Jewish, that 20% of its citizens retain full democratic rights, that, it, that its minorities have their own language, their own school system? How do you actually explain that? Because you're not making any sense. You either have an ethno state where it's purely Jews, or you have a democracy like Israel, where 20% of its population have full rights, are minorities, but have... I think we're people are frozen. Is it perfect? No, it isn't. But I'll tell you one thing, it's, the, it's, the, it's minorities are far better protected than minorities would be under your version of an ethnic state. Look here, the only reason there's so many Arabs left in Israel <laughs> is because you haven't finished ethnically cleansing them yet. So why okay. do they have a vote? Why, why haven't they kicked them out? Why, why have they got full you democratic rights? You civil settlements, you bulldoze people's homes, you shoot children for throwing stones at tanks, and then you have the gall to make out that I'm the monster. You And you do it with a straight face. You know, there is this sort of what you would call an anti-Semitic trope, but you are living up to it tonight. People are watching this, and they're watching a man defending the horrors that I'm talking about. And you, with a straight face, are claiming that in some way you're a victim, and your people are the victims. The but fact you, is, you, you want you. something for yourselves, but you want to deny that same right to the rest of the world. And you, you carry you out your will. Do you actually know your history of 1947? Do you know your history of 1947 and 1948? Do you know what happened during the War of Independence? Do you know how many Palestinians left, why they left? whether they were told to leave and to come back. No, you don't. You, you, are, you are basically swallowing the lie that is being used time and time again. So no, Israel is not built on the lives of tens of thousands of Palestinians. That 
that part of the land is our ancestral homeland, absolutely of the Jewish religion. But it's a, but minorities are extremely well protected, extremely well valued. They sit in the houses of parliament in the Knesset. That's hardly an ethno state. I mean, the facts, I could reel off facts after facts. You can't answer any of them. They're judges. I just did. You did DNA test. That's not a religion. Do, do Mark, Christians DNA, DNA test? test Mark, DNA test is not the official policy of the state of Israel. The fact that you find one article where there's a specific argument of someone who's trying to get a marriage with a woman and he's trying to prove who his parents are, that doesn't mean that all, every Israeli needs to pass a DNA test. Israel is more multi-ethnic than England is. Israel has more diversity, more ethnic diversity than, is, than England. Right? I'll jump in there. I'll jump in there. The state of Israel actually doesn't allow you to migrate based on DNA. So if I prove genetically I'm 100% Jewish and I try to move to Israel based on my DNA, that's not enough. It's literally the, the acceptance, and you don't need... The article to. you mentioned was a scandal for the very reason that it's so rare. Okay. Mark, I'm a little surprised at you. I've been watching your, your show for a while, and usually you come up with much better, less disingenuous arguments. This was a rare case where rabbis got into trouble for using a DNA test, and that's why it was a scandal. Israel is less of an ethno state than England is. England is more ethnically uh, um, homogeneous that Israel is at the moment. Mark, but I'd like to ask you a question, if I may. Um, assuming that I'm a Zionist, I have no problem. I'm more on the alt-right side. I have no beef with the idea of a white ethno state. Unlike Rafi, I don't have a problem with white people. I don't have a problem with white people having their own space where they can pursue their own uniquely European identity the way Jews can pursue their Jewish identity. I, I, I'll agree with you on that. My question to you is, how come the English or the Americans themselves are not asking for this ethno state? If you guys really wanted an ethno state, you can vote for parties that will push that, uh, that uh, idea further. There are countries in the world that are ethno states, like Japan, like Korea. They're openly about being a, they're open, they're open about being ethno states. So, I mean, I'm not against you guys doing what, pursuing your identity as you see fit. But that's a decision you guys need to make. We can't make that decision for you. Neither can we stop you. We're a tiny minority. To blame us for your decision because Jews have risen to the top in Marx's circles. Jews have risen to the top in every circle, Mark. We've, we're just a talented people. You know this. Now, you know, Jews are a talented people. We're in the film industry. We're in the banking industry, maybe. We're in uh, the professional we're also military. We're, we're high-ranking officers in every military we join. Okay, Jews are talented people. Why hold that against them? I'm not holding anyway, against I'll just say one thing. The U.S. administration, the most right-wing members of the U.S. administration under Trump were trying to stop, uh, stop uh, um, border, uh, the border crisis. And the guy named Stephen Miller, who's Jewish, was getting attacked for being a Jew and for being too right-wing or too based. So I feel like sometimes you guys, and I mean, Mark, you and your friends, you kind of hold our talents against us and um, misinterpret our intentions when they don't exist. And I'd say there's also a gross double standard that takes place. So when you look at the Jewish people, you view us collectively. And so you've just listened to, to Judas Maccabeus. He's way to the right of me, not quite as far right as Ralph, um, probably slightly left of yourself, Mark, but you've listened to him, and he probably shares a lot of politics and values that you share. Yeah, I agree with Mark on a lot of things, even though he hates me. But then what you'll also do, Mark, you will then look at a very left-leaning Jew, a very left-wing Jew, and you'll bundle the two of them together. So you'll look at policies that take place and are enacted in Israel, and Israel has moved slightly to the right under the Netanyahu government, and you will say, look at Israel, look at the Jews, they're so right-wing over here, they're so protective over here, but then look at America, or look at Britain, and you see different politics, and the Jews in these nations tend to reflect the political sentiment of the nation as a whole. So there aren't droves of English indigenous whites lining up to join your political movement, Mark. They're, they're not. They're more centrist. They're more like the Jews on this hangout. We tend to be aligned with the politics of the nations that we exist in because we're citizens like any other citizen. And so the thing I want to point out is this huge double standard 
that you apply to the Jewish people that you don't apply to yourself. You'll mention that there are Jewish NGOs pushing multiculturalism or open borders. Then forget to mention that there are European NGOs in Israel pushing all kinds of politics on Israelis, on Palestinians, interfering with what's going on there. There's this huge standard that you hold the Jewish people to that you don't hold to yourself. You view us as a collective, but not yourself as a collective. Right. Firstly, and I've just got to, I've got to say this. I'm happily, I'm happy to take you all on, but you have to ask one question at a time. We have multiple people asking multiple questions at the same time. So all that's going to end up happening is I'm going to end up doing a 20 minute speech. And I can tell you, Joseph, that is the last thing you want. That is the last yeah, thing you want. I'd but I will try. I would. But maybe we can come in here just to help Mark out and just to balance things. So my name is Ralph. And as Joseph has said, I represent the extreme far right. What do I mean by that? If people accuse me of being a fascist, am I unmuted yet? Can you chat me yet? Okay, brilliant. So I represent the extreme far right. What do I mean by that? Who's this non-white chap sitting here with the rivers of blood shirts advocating for extreme far rights? Well, I'm on record advocating for the 14 words. I'm on record with my real name advocating for white nationalism. I'm a race realist. I mean, if you gave me an interview, I'd tick absolutely everything a white supremacist would tick, except that I'm not white. I am half Indian and half English. So to both of you having my, my, my brothers in arms on both sides having a squabble, I represent the world's largest ethno state, with by every metric the most racist people on the planet. No one comes close to the Indians as being racist. I'm a neo-reactionary. I'm a Christian supremacist. So on one hand, I believe and I have and that's why Joseph brought me on here. For months, I've been badgering Joseph and others to set up the Jewish question because I believe the white people have a right to pose the Jewish question. On the other hand, the great people of the tribe of Judea have a right to bring that collective formidable IQ and return with the Jewish answer. So I think what's happening here is, and Mark is right, we, we don't want a kind of a fight with everyone on it. I think we need to separate a couple of things here. What are the components of the Jewish question and what would be the acceptable spectrum of responses in the Jewish answer? And if I try to summarize that, white rights are under threat like no other collective happen. The Jewish people should be able to empathize because they've been the most persecuted tribe in the history of the world. But right now, they have a, they have a state, be it a native national state or an ethno state, they have a homeland. White people, and Mark, uh, forgive me if I'm paraphrasing your concerns, are concerned that they're going to be run off the board via the great replacement, miscegenation, predation, and a host of other well-articulated stuff from the alt right. So somehow I think if you try to jump across that and say, what would a solution, and I won't use an adjective, what would a solution to this look like for a peaceful and prosperous world? It must look like something that would satiate the requirements of white rights. And that, that requirement could be the right to be left alone, for example, without any explanation, just the right to be left alone by non-whites. And on the other hand, the Jewish diaspora may have to make, a, uh, make up their mind whether they are for or against this. Would that be a good framing? To, rather than having us running around to say, look, here's the JQ and its two components, and here's the Jewish to answer and the two, and let's have a chat of which bit's fitting. Without the, the buckets just smashing across, and at some point it will become a dog fight. So there you go. Thank you. I was going to say, firstly, um, I think his name's Judas. I, you said I hate you. I noticed that when you people talk, you use very emotive points. You said, I'm sh you're, you're sure that I hate you. I, I don't hate you. I haven't said I've hated you. And I've come on here saying I don't advocate for violence. And I'm pleased we're having this discussion. So please don't use emotive terms to try and make me seem the bad guy before you frame your argument. Now, you were talking about the ethno state, saying I picked random articles. Well, here's another random article, surely just another coincidence. But Israel forcibly injected African immigrants with birth control reports claim. Well, you know, that might be another random article, but it, it, all these random articles seem to add together like little pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that make up a picture of ethnic supremacy and a group of people who are absolutely committed to ensuring that they have an ethno state. Now, you said that Quite honestly, you were honest. You said that Jews have all this power. They run the American establishment. They run the media. They run Hollywood, etc. And I, I agree with you. I agree with you, Judas. You said that, and I agree with you. But what I'll say is this. It isn't about holding power. It's what you do with power that counts. If you have power, you can destroy or you can create. 
And the power wielded by Jews in the porn industry, in Hollywood, in the media, in the press, in the music industry has been very, very destructive to um, white civilization and to white society. In fact, you people, you do act as a group within group preference. I'm not saying you all agree 100%, but even when you don't agree, you don't tend to tear strips off each other publicly. However, white people are now so atomized, so fractured, and so destroyed as a group that even when tens and tens of thousands of white girls are being systematically groomed and abused by Muslims, white men sit cowering in their homes, refusing to take on the issue for being for fear of being called racist, because you have used the word racist and you have used words like bigot and hater to indoctrinate European people into not even being able to fight back when they are being threatened with extinction. And that is not power. That is the misuse of power. And quite crucially, it is the Jewish mis misuse of power that is used to destroy the ethnic Europeans. So it's our fault that girls are getting groomed in the middle of England somewhere? That's the Jews? I didn't, no, no, I didn't say that. I said the lack of reaction from whites is largely your fault because you have indoctrinated white people into hating themselves and refusing to fight back because they are so fearful of words like racist, which have been bombarded upon white people again and again, racist, hater, bigot. In fact, people today would rather walk down the street in the knowledge that their daughters are being raped by Muslim men than they would say that their daughters are being raped because they're so scared of being called a racist. And that is part of the indoctrination drip fed into their minds by the media. And you admitted that the media is controlled by Jews. Can I just bring it off for a second? Because um, I think, Mark, it's very all well and good to, to quote a couple of, as you said, the word media claims, which are spurious and, and, and just not true. But let's just analyze the facts about Israel for a minute, because you seem to be avoiding these facts. And I'm, I think I know why, but I'd like you to explain why. So let's look at Israel in terms of its multiculturalism. Let's look at the fact that the Arab parties in the Knesset, at the last Knesset, obviously there are elections now, made up the third largest party in the Knesset. Let's look at the fact that there are Bedouins and Druze uh, Arabs who serve in the Israeli Defence Force. Let's look at the fact that you can go to any doc, any hospital across Israel and there are Arab doctors, indeed there are Arab doctors running these hospitals. You can drive on any road in Israel and you can see English road signs, Hebrew road signs and Arabic road signs. You could call any mobile phone operator, any company in Israel, and there'll be an option for Hebrew, an option for Arabic, an option nowadays for French, for Russian, and possibly for English as well. You can go to industries across Israel and you can see Arabs and Jews and Christians working together. There are no limits of movement within uh, the state of Israel. Anybody can go anywhere. There's no issue with that. There's freedom. There's no separate roads. There's no separate buses. There's no separate hospitals. There's no separate public toilets. There are, there are Arab Israelis who are diplomats who represent Israel on the international stage. These are all facts. You can quote articles from this one and that one. The fact is that these are hard facts. You can't go to the Knesset and ignore the fact that there are 15 or 16 Arab members of the Israeli parliament. Yes, Israel is a Jewish state. Yes, Israel has Jewish symbols um, for its state. But how is that any different? I live in the UK where our head of state is also the head of the Church of England. My national holidays here are not Jewish holidays. They are Christmas Day. They are Boxing Day. They are, Easter, they are Good Friday. They are Easter Monday. There's no difference between any of those. That doesn't make Israel an ethno state. And all these Arab Israelis, all these minorities who work, who represent Israel, who are professionals, who are politicians, who are parliamentarians, who are soldiers, you can say all you want, but the facts prove you completely wrong. Well, they don't. They don't at all, because you're absolutely mischaracterizing things. Um, the fact is... How, is that, how are all those professions and all those people mischaracterizing the ethnic makeup of the state of Israel? 
I'm, the ethnic I'm, makeup of the state of Israel has been a makeup that has constantly swung in the uh, benefit of Jews. The Jewish population carries on growing in Israel, whereas the birth rates of Arabs continue to fall. The opposite is true of oh, England. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry, but that's just nonsense. What, what, what's actually going on with birth rates in Israel is that Jewish birth rates are rising but they're still nowhere near at the level of the Arab birth rates. Uh, and all of this is somewhat irrelevant. We've got an optimistic, forward-looking society that actually knows what its identity wants to be. We argue at the fringes, and, and but we actually have an identity that we can cling to. I, my, tr my issue with the... I've got no issue with Europe defending itself, defending its borders. I'm against open borders. I've been a friend of Tommy Robinson for a long time. Um, I helped the guy who wrote this book, Easy Meat, which is the only serious book on the grooming scandal. Um, my issue is you, you have this idea of a white European race. You seem that you want an identity or you have created for yourselves a super identity that spans Poland, Northern Italy. Is that in your identity? Um, uh, Arkansas, Georgia, England, Wales, you've got, you're trying to create an identity that envelops all of those under which banner to raise your flag and say, we're, we're, we're being put down. Now, in what way are you being put down? Now, let's, let's just, is it that you're not getting enough back from your own states? I don't, I really, I struggle with this because as far as I'm concerned, socialism is the biggest evil thing on the, in the planet. You're right. Communism and socialism. I, don't pin that on Jews exclusively. Many people were involved in the creation of communism as an idea, and it was it it did a huge damage to actually Jewish people because the entire you know the, the Jews of the Soviet Union that wound up coming to Israel we know have been largely de-Judaized. They've had to, if they wanted to, reinvent and refine Judaism again because the Soviet Union was a very very good destroyer of the cultures that it conquered, because that, that's what big colonial inventions like the Soviet Union did. They squashed the underlying. You know, that was what led Stalin to um, uh, genocide in Ukraine. You know, he, he, and it was a, they, they, they were, there was a constant push to, to wipe out underlying other identities. And Judaism is another identity. It is not an ethnicity. There is an ethnic component to it, obviously, but with so many different shades of Judaism and colors of Jews, uh, the, the idea that we're, we're ethnically, you know, ethnicity is just, or, or blood. I mean, the way I look at it, I, I come with this indigenous view. Judaism is indigenous to the land of Israel. Ju indigenous means has five components. And you're right. Yes, blood is one of them. Land, language spirituality which we've got um these th these are the core of the jewish identity we know who we are and israel is a great expression of that and then you'll notice that yes it's going more to the right wing what you would call right wing it defends its borders that to me is an expression of judaism the fact that there are jews in a diaspora who are completely lost to judaism and who advocate for nonsense like abortion and uh, or, or over liberal abortion and open borders and stuff. It, it's there are Jews who do that, but then there are a great deal of your, I'm afraid, white skinned fellow whites who also advocate for that nonsense too. And in fact, numbers wise, you know, this is the whole game. It's like if there is one drop of Jew in any organization, does that Jew control it? Is that 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 seems to be the argument I get constantly? There are Jews in Hollywood. They are no, by no means the majority. They might be an overrepresented sample. They are certainly not a majority in Congress or the Senate. Um, they might be overrepresented for their position in the rest of wider society. But when you come to Israel and you realize the street sweeper and the, the, the refuse people and the bus drivers, they're all Jews too. You know, we are not just overachievement, overachieving porn, um, porn. Mm -hmm gods in in hollywood <laughs> we occupy all levels of society but 
What are you missing? Are you being put down? Are you not getting enough from your socialist states that you would like to create in Europe? Um, if I may just I jump in and answer that quite briefly, and sometimes it helps to have a non-white advocate for white rights. And I'll be very blunt. White people are very and increasingly upset they are upset everywhere I go across white nations. I talk to far right groups in Hungary. I spent six weeks in Hungary. I go to very radical racist groups in the United States. All of them white. All of them white only. And I hear the same simple thing which we can detach from the Jewish people. They are upset because they are losing on the board. When I look and I compare that to a thriving superpower in the making of India, India is the most racist in-group preference, non-miscegenating, nuclear weapon-powered nation going, and the Indian far right going, good Lord, what's happening to the white far right? They're losing the board. So there's two components. There's an internal white crisis that is legitimate of itself, and its expression is constrained. I, as a brown person, can wear this shirt, and if Joseph forgives me for lowering the tone, I can walk down the street in the Calitone of Stepney where I live with a T-shirt that says, Packies for free speech. And it is my brown privilege that allows me to do so. But if Mark was to wear that shirt, an Englishman in his land, his homeland, he would be run off the board. This is a legitimate cultural crisis for white people. I see it in Holland. I see it in, in, in Hungary. I see it in Poland. I see it in the United States. It's fault and its root cause analysis is twofold. Here's where I disagree with the all right as a Christian imperialist. Part of the reason this has been allowed to happen is a hollowing of the traditional cultures of England that were Christian by allowing the Enlightenment accelerated to the modern 60s liberal age. The birth rate has plummeted, abortion has occurred, in Mark's book and other people's storms, plenty of reasons are there for an internal malaise. This is only compounded by mass immigration and all the other things we see happening. The Jewish question and the friction is quite simple. If I try to just wrap up the point, whose side are you on? Are you on the side of white ethno-nationalists? And I'm standing here in a kind of shocking parody of someone who isn't white, right? And I consider both sides say, are you on the side of white native national rights? Which would, for example, see me being deported. Am I on the right for the rights for white people to deport me? Or am I not? And I believe, I'll hand it over to Mark Weber, that the white identitarians do not feel they have an answer from the Jewish people. I'm not sure there is a simple answer, but that's how I'd phrase it. Well, I'd like to follow up on that, Ralph. You said that there's a problem here with a lack of Christianity and a lack of Christian morals. Am I correct? I indeed. I'm a Christian supremacist, yeah. Well, let me read this article to you from Haaretz. Dirty Jews and the Christian right. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Mark, 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 we've all read Haaretz. Listen. If I go Please, and I pick up, listen, listen, Mark, Mark I if I go and read The Guardian about you, how much of a true impression will I get? This is Haaretz. This is a Jewish paper. Haaretz. I know. I have written Why are you letting me speak? You all spoken. I, I just, just to set one. I've just written don't read the headline. Don't Haaretz. read the headline. I've had, you can read it after. I've had Haaretz try to get me fired from a job I don't have. I, I'm in a, I'm in a long running battle with Haaretz writers because I call Haaretz evil all the time. The trouble with taking Haaretz as at face value is that you will get from Haaretz the same reasonable and true view of Israel as I would get of you if I only read the Guardian on uh, the Guardian, the Independent, or, or any of the big mainstream press about you. So that's exactly so. Now you can carry on and read Haaretz, and I could debunk each and every line in Haaretz for the rest of my life. I think we let Mark speak. I, I want to hear what Mark has to say. Two. Uh, sorry for jumping in, but Haaretz is a trigger word. <laughs> well, there's so many people who've asked me so many questions, and I was just going to read this headline from Haaretz Dirty Jews and the Christian Right. Brilliant actors like Larry David and Sarah Silverman are challenging America's powerful religious family-friendly culture and asserting their Jewishness by glorifying obscenity. Well, there's your attack on Christianity. Now, again, that's just another piece in this large puzzle. But you said earlier, and I, and I want to bring this up, Brian of London, you said something along the lines of defending borders 
is part of Judaism. That was one of your arguments. You actually said that. You said you've got this right to defend your borders. Well, maybe you could tell that to the 1,500 rabbis that have signed a, a national rabbinic letter calling on the US to keep I it frequently going. do. I frequently do. I hope you do. Because I, you work with Tommy Robinson, and yeah. Tommy Robinson has Jewish moderators of his website that ensure that anyone that mentions anyone pushing an anti-white narrative that happens to be Jewish has their Jewish name removed. And what I'm saying is I will call out any whites that they are the enemy of what I what I believe in. I will call that. I went to Latvia. And I, I loved it there. I had a really great time. And I spoke to some Latvians and said, oh, Mark, we love having you here. But some of these Brits that come here, they grab, they harass our women, they get drunk, they urinate on the war memorial. And I said straight away, well, these people, you know, if I saw them here, I'd kick them up the arse. I'd, I'd want them out of Latvia. But the problem is when Jews carry out anti-Western activities, you find the Jews that are supposedly for the West refuse to name those Jews. And Tommy Robinson's website is a very, very good example of that. Because when it comes down to it, you might have Jews who claim they're for the West, but they will not step over another Jew who is anti-Western. And when it I comes do down to it, time. you I'm people sorry, stick sorry. together. I, I, I really do. I mean, sorry, sorry, can I just, can I, Brian, sorry, can I just say something? First of all, I've got to say, I mean, the the, the vile anti-Semitism that's coming out of Mark's mouth is just is just shocking. The Jews are purveyors of porn; they control the world. I mean, it's just it, it, if it wasn't so non, I mean, it's just offensive. It's grossly offensive. There's no proof for this. It's just pure, purely, purely made up. Personally, my opinion is I abhor Tommy Robinson. I think he's a racist, and there are plenty of Jews in this country. Brian will disagree with me, but there are plenty of Jews in this country who do not support Tommy Robinson. In fact, when Tommy Robinson came to Manchester, we made it very clear that the Jewish community, along with many others, should have absolutely nothing to do with him. But the stuff that's being, I mean, this is just this is just turning into a Jewish hate fest. At the end of the day, Jews are not purveyors of porn. They are not corrupting white yes, English are. men. No, they're not. Then there's no proof of Bring that. Bring Dr. Nathan no Abrams' argument. He's a Jew. Sorry, sorry. Now you're talking over me. Now you're talking over me. Jews do not control the media. Jews do not control Sky News or the BBC. It's just a nonsense. Um, and we know that because the BBC are considered to be, the BBC certainly, with a coverage of Israel, are no friends of the State of Israel. Surely if the Jews control the media, the coverage of the State of Israel would be far more favourable than it is, for example, on the BBC and in the press. So absolutely, it, it's just a hate fest. It, it, you, you're talking, you're just basically being grossly anti-Semitic when you talk about Jews in this way. Jews are citizens of the UK, we are proud citizens of the UK. We contribute, we vote, we have contributed to the fabric of life of this great nation. We're proud to be British and we are also Zionists. We also believe in, in, in Israel being the nation state of the Jewish people. You are being a racist. You are a racist. You're an anti-Semite. You can laugh all you want, but you are, you are basically lying about Jews and accusing them of things that are anti-Semitic. There's no other two ways about it. You know you are. Just own it. No, no, no. You see, you've not said anything of substance there. You've done exactly what I knew you would do tonight. You've used a lot of buzzwords, which are nothing but silencing tactics, used to prevent debate. Read the article by Dr. Nathan Abrams, a learned Jew who has written an entire paper on the emergence of the porn industry in the US, and he has quotes by leading pornographers, he states that the emergence of the porn industry in America was largely, well, 100% Jewish, according to him, in its emergence. And he has quotes from these people, and he's a Jew himself. And he's saying that's a good thing. Yet you have no counter argument to what I am saying, because you probably don't, don't even know of the essay that I'm talking about. It's but it's the but you know what? You, by the same token, have absolutely no argument to the fact about Israel being a democratic state with uh, with with rights for all its citizens. I, yeah. At the end of the day, I don't agree with with Brian supporting Tommy Robinson. Certainly, I don't consider myself to be on the right wing. I abhor the right wing. I I, I abhor the far left as well. I believe that the United Kingdom is a democracy. It should stay as it is. It's a Christian state. It calls itself a Christian state. I believe that that um, that that 
Identity should be preserved. I believe that we should have Christmas lights, not winter lights. We are we live in a, in a Christian state and we respect the laws of that state and we live as cit full citizens of that state. But to say that we control the world, I mean, we've done a pretty good job of it, haven't we? We've been massacred, we've been uh, murdered. We're doing pretty well, aren't we? Absolutely not. It's a load of rubbish. You might say I'm using buzzwords. You're quoting spurious articles, but actually the facts speak for themselves. Well, if you want to start talking about massacres, should we start talking about the millions that were massacred by the Bolshevik government, which was largely Perfect. Jewish? Perfect. So let's go there, Mark, because I think this has been the problem with this debate. You will frame it. You will say, look at this terrible thing. Look at this terrible event. Here, look, I found a Jew, Kaganovich. I found a Jew, Trotsky. I found a Jew, Marx. But what if, let's look at the communists. Let's look at the Soviet state. Every single leader of the communists of the USSR wasn't Jewish, he was white. Take the Holodomor. I know you like, you like to talk about the Holodomor. Do you know how many of the, the, the generals or the, the, the leaders within the Communist Party were tried by the Ukrainian court, post-communistly? I think there was six or seven. Molotov, Stalin. There was many, only one of them was a Jew. And he wasn't in charge. Stalin was in charge. But what do you do? It's a Jew. It's Kaganovich. We found a Jew, therefore it's a Jew. You take someone like Marx. Do you know what Marx said about the Jews, Marx? Have you read Marx on the Jewish question? It's a book, it's a paper I'm sure you'd like the, the sound of the title of. What Marx writes in the Jewish question is, what is the worldly religion of the Jew? Huckstering. What is his worldly God? Money. Who does that sound like, Marx? It sounds a little bit like you. Because what you will do, you will look at everything that you dislike in the world and you will blame the Jew. In every shadow, in everything that you see that you don't like, you see a Jew behind it. So the media, it, it, you talk about the porn industry. You spend a lot of time talking about the porn industry. You must really enjoy researching the porn industry. I'm sure it's enjoyable for you. The largest porn company in the world isn't Jewish. Do you know what it is? I'm sure you do. Larry Flint isn't Jewish. So the, you go to the media. You talk about Jewish control over the media. The largest media companies in the world aren't Jewish. AT&T, not Jewish. So what, Fox News, not Jewish. You will get time and time again, you will find a Jew and you will pin everything that you dislike about that on the Jews. And it's disingenuous because the reality is Jews are a minority population in the world. And as Rafi pointed out, actually it was even as you pointed out, Mark, it's what happens when you have power. That's where it determines what type of a person you are. The Jews never ran the USSR. The Jews were always a minority and a persecuted minority in the USSR. Yeah, you can shake your head all you like. All of us, on the, all the Jewish people on this call, know people that suffered under the Soviets. So you can shake your head and live in your little fantasy 4chan world but the reality is the Jews were persecuted by the Russians. Anyone can go on Google and read about the persecution that they faced. Rick Miller, circumcision was banned. Um, Jew rabbis were put to death. Jews were called the cosmopolitan bourgeoisie. Yeah, you can show us every article. The Soviets supported the Arabs. They supported the Palestinians. They were against Israel. And I just want to finish on my point. It's what you do with the power. And so many of the people on this panel would support the idea of an English identity and would support, I mean, Rafi and myself probably excluded, excluded, but the others would. But when people like you, Mark, had power, that was Nazi Germany. What happened? Six million of our people died. Six million. Almost everyone on this call, with the exception of maybe Ralph, will have lost family members in that tragedy. And so it's what you do with power that counts. And Israel despite what you say, has not genocided millions of people. Israel has only ever fight, fought defensive wars. It's repelled Arab invasions and all the while protected those very, the very ethnic group that it's supposed to be at war with. It's preserved their language, their culture, guaranteed them rights. And there's nothing that you can say that can change those facts because we live in the age of information and anybody can Google anything that we say. Indeed they can, just like Putin. First Soviet government was mostly Jewish. There you have it. You know, every time you say something, I can pull up screenshots, I can pull up facts, I can pull up 
articles and information that basically proves what I am saying, just like I did with the article by Dr. Nathan Abrams about the porn industry. And then it always comes back to the fact that I'm either an anti-Semite, I'm a racist, and when it comes what? down to the final, the final building block in your... Um, you know, defensive war is always the Holocaust. So, well, now, well, if history we, has taught we, us one thing, it is that you people have been thrown out of 109 different yeah, nations and states. Now, is that because the whole world are really nasty yeah, and yeah. mean to Jews and all uh, ganged up against And that there's a big conspiracy against so, you guys. Is it that you do things to other nations and states that gets you in this position? And what I'm saying is, if you want to run Hollywood, why don't you run it for the benefit of the host nation? If okay, Mark, want, Mark, we, we, if you want to run the yeah, media, yeah. benefit of the host nation, be good to us, and you wouldn't get yourselves in these positions. If, okay. And I'll tell you something as well, especially okay. you, Brian of London, since yes. you claim to be of London. If you people were actually good to us, if you people didn't constantly disrupt our societies and call for open borders, then the West would be a lot better place for you. Because I'll tell you something now, if the West does go down this multicultural route, the West will be far, far less forgiving and tolerant to Jews okay. than it is now. Okay, just what's going on? Two minutes, two minutes. I just want to fact check one thing. Mark. You said the first communist govern, government was Russian. I, uh, sorry, Jewish. I think it's really important we deal with facts in this conversation. Gurbanov, Milutin, Antonov, Alvzyeznov, Prelnikov, Debienko, Nogin, Lunacharsky, Teodorovich, Raikov, Apokov, Apokov, Shalapnikov, Stalin, Gleblov, Avilov, Skvotslov, Stepanovov, and Trotsky. Of those terribly pronounced names, one of them was Jewish. It doesn't matter what Putin said, all of this first government of the, com the first communist government are recorded. <laughs> Anybody can Google this. Anybody can look up their ethnicity. They were Polish. They were Ukrainian. They were, the, with the exception of Trotsky, they weren't Jewish. Now, you may use the argument, there's just anybody. Anybody can fact check what you're saying. So you can shake your head and show an article, but we can check the original source material and refute what you're saying. Can you refute the Jews the bazaar? Which is, let me just, let me just yeah. focus on one thing that Mark said, and this goes to it, and this he's just proved it himself. He said to Brian, he said, what was it about you Jews that got you thrown out of 109 countries? You know, you guys have to behave. You have to be good Jews. Otherwise, it's going to happen to you again. This is what he is going to do. This is why he's an anti-Semite. This is why he's a racist. This is why the only way that he will achieve what he wants is by violence. That is what I said. I said, said if you multiply the Europe, no, he didn't say that. Bringing in no, you didn't say that. Listen, we, we, listen. I, I'm going to just get straight past Mark's point that we were bringing. It's not Jews. This man is an anti-Semite, and you know it hates me. Yeah, okay, and let's stop with I'm the throwing of the anti-Semite thing. Maybe we know. Chaps, maybe do that all around. Maybe perhaps. Can I get to a bigger point? <laughs> There's a bigger point here. Okay, it's not Jews bringing in Europe. Europe is run by mostly non-Jews. I mean, if Mark is going to believe that every single thing that's bad in his world is because of a Jew. We're going to leave him to that view. But the bigger point is that Europe is heading down a path of losing itself to Islam. They've brought in uh, an, an, an ideology that is unprepared to assimilate or change. And what that leads to is the native population becoming dimmies, becoming fearful of stepping out of line in the Islamic caliphate. And that's, that's, that's the way I see Europe heading. And that's why I left Europe. 10 years ago, because I realized it would not be a good place to bring up my Jewish kids. I don't care whether it's Jews bringing in all the Muslims. I don't believe it is. I, I think that the work of Bakir or a Jew, carefully documenting Arabia and what is going on in the in Europe, which is basically uh, the Fourth Reich, Reich the, the reestablishment of a Nazi and communist um, system. That's what's going on in Europe. Now, Israel represents what happened when Jews lost their country for 2,000 years. And we had to go through quite a fight to get it back in 1948. Um, 
you you seem to both hate everything about Jews, but you re, you seem to admire the byproduct of what we've managed to create in our own nation. Um, I admire it too. I don't believe that we're as strong or as powerful in the rest of the world as you do. I believe that the the tales of Jewish power uh, rest. They, they all very, very largely do go back to the protocols of the elders of Zion. Um, those were used extensively throughout the 1900s. Um, they're still alive today. The Arabs love reading them. Um, the Chinese love them too. But when they read them, they, they think how great we Jews are and want to emulate us. Uh, why don't you, instead of, instead of just feeling put about, I can't even see what little picture you've put up. Anyway, it's probably some... Norway just says Norway is too is white. Too white according yeah, okay. To the, so the Jews, Jews said something people. stupid. I, I, this is the bit that, that gets me, is that, yes, we, we have stupid left-wing left Jews. And a great number of Jews outside of Israel, a, a greater number of Jews outside Israel, are left-wing, follow a socialist and communist ideology. And yes, they will lead to destruction, but they're vastly outnumbered by the number of socialist, communist, white Europeans or or any other shade of people, because unfortunately the communist ideology um, is an ideology of envy and of greed, and it does take hold and it grips people. And I have been trying to fight that all my life, because as far as I'm concerned, the two evils in this world are communism, socialism, and Islam. And the two together are a complete disaster, and that's what we've got. We've got those two things working together. Europe has to take control of itself. I agree. I think a strong Christian identity is the counter to uh, a, a Muslim invasion that you're suffering from. Um, and without your own asserted identity and being able to assert your own identity, yeah, you, you will be in deep trouble. Um, Israel was lost. We lost Israel. It took, it took us 2,000 years and a freaking war and then a number of wars to re-keep it. You should actually be looking at Jews and thinking, we should be emulating some of this stuff, like the cohesiveness of our identity. And just to jump on that point, again, just to maybe diffuse things slightly, you cannot dispute certain core demographic data. The great replacement is occurring. What does the board look like at 2050? It is no longer the old war. India and China will have 55% of the board, right? Now, they are going to be the world's largest ethno states, fully nuked up. Within five to eight years, India itself will be able to decimate all of Europe and most of the United States with nuclear weapons. The new fault line says it is only the white Europeans are undergoing a pure existential crisis. On that 2050 figure data set, there's only 850 million white people left. The existential crisis for white people is real. The Great Replacement is real. The European decimated birth rates are real. The 10 million Children aborted in the United Kingdom from the 1970s is real. I think what we're seeing here is animosity understandable mixed with envy because the Jewish people have survived arguably, and I know the alt-right will hate me for saying this, a horror lasting for two millennia, but they've recovered from it by excellence. White people are currently undergoing a trauma they've never seen in their history, and there doesn't seem to be any way out of the woods. And Brian from London, you had a good point. The solution must be both internal, it must be a resurgence of faith, it must be a resurgence of all the things that made Europe great once, and it must be new allies. And the new allies will have to be from the East, because the East is going to run the board for the next two centuries. The threat to white Europeans, and I'll be a racialist here, is from sub-Saharan blacks and the Islamic world. They are non-integrating predatorial forces. And most white people I know or extreme white nationalists would agree immediately that that is the real threat. I believe the Jewish people are being used as a proxy. And if I were to challenge Mark or anyone else, without getting into the, you know, you know the Jews are running the banks and all that sort of nonsense both ways, I think the real thing is you should rise above in white pride and in white excellence to exceed above Jewish performance. The only victory must be to outdo the Jew, to become white and white. <laughs> Right? You can't go there and complain and say, hey, I got my ass kicked by Ashkenazi IQ. Right now, the last data set says Indians and Chinese in the U.S. diaspora at MIT and Caltech are just about kicking Ashkenazi IQ scores. 
you need to step up and play hard. Now, I appreciate, and I can, more than anyone else, because I'm not Jewish, and as a Christian imperialist, I could go down, you guys killing our Messiah, and I'm not white, and I represent the largest ethno-nuclear state. The whites need to rise up. And the question, I guess, for the Jewish audience is, which one of you is on the side of the whites? I appreciate, I like Joseph, love Joseph very much. He's a liberal. I see Rafi is arguing from the liberal, centrist, enlightenment position. I suspect the other two gentlemen are far more right wing. I'm an extreme right wing. I will, I will defend the 14 words at the risk of a court, a court suit. Because I'm for the 14 words. I'm a rabbi and I don't have a problem with the 14 words. A good man. So, and I think the question therefore for Mark and others is going to be, isn't a constructive way forward to split the pack and say, which Jews are standing with me? Here's a brown man wearing a t-shirt, David. Which other people are my allies in defending whitey and who are not? And I would say, deport using extreme force anyone who is not on the side of whites and then make peace and love with those who want to stand with you. Ultimately, that's the only way to save, that's the only way to implement an optimal solution in the 14 words. Otherwise, tick tock, tick tock, demographic clock, right? I've got to say, it, it, the whole conversation has moved on to a different level. And, you know, this whole thing about, you know, you're talking about if the Jews aren't the good Jews and they don't behave, they're going to get kicked out. If they don't stand with the whites, forcibly remove them. The, the West is being taken over by, by Muslims. Listen, let's be very clear. Um, radical Islam working with the, the far left is a huge danger uh, to Jews. There's no doubt about that. We know that. The Red-Green Alliance, we see that all the time. There's absolutely no 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 argument about that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I've got to say, um, you know, we tried to have a, a sort of a serious or intellectual debate about this sort of thing. And all we've heard from Mark is be a good Jew, otherwise you're going to get kicked out. The Jews control the world. They're responsible for all its evils. They're responsible for white men in Rochdale being emancipated. I mean, this is just anti-Semitic, pure anti-Semitic stuff. I'm going to say, guys, I'm leaving this now because... Can I ask you one question before you go? There's nothing, there's nothing to be gained from this. Can I ask you one question before you go? Yeah, we're, we're, we're engaging with, with hate speech. Oh. And, um, you know, I'm not going to answer any more questions because, really, we thought, let's do this. You know, Joe had a noble idea to try and, you know, exp you know talk to people. Actually, what we've done is, is expose the hatred and anti-Semitism of people like Mark, who basically said it. Why were you expelled from 109 countries? You weren't good Jews. If you're good Jews, you can stay when we come to power. If not, you're off. That pretty much says it. Forcible transfer, expulsion, concentration, carrying on of Nazi Germany, of white, of white supremacist, racist ideology, uh, and the Jews are the ones, yet again, that are going to pay the price. The lies about Israel are there to see that we stated Israel is a multi-democratic, multi-ethnic state. The facts prove for itself. The people in positions of power prove it. And you can pull up occasional articles from Haaretz to try and prove your point, but actually go there. Go to hospitals in the north of the country. Go to the soda stream factory in the south of the country. Go to the parliament. Go and see the judges. Go and see the Muslims and the Christians in the army. You can shake your head at me. I've lived there. I know that. Israel is not uh, an ethnocracy. Can it's, I a ask you one question? it's a liberal democratic state. And um, you know what? Everything else that you can said I ask you is one sure. question. Um, on that, um, I am out. I'll actually, I'm going to say what my question was. I'm going to say what my question was, because it's a very reasonable question. Uh, Rafi said that I suggested that Jews in white nations, in European nations, should behave in a reasonable manner and in the interests of white people. Now, I was going to say to him, why would it be unreasonable for those in white nations why would it be unreasonable for those in white nations, in European nations, to want people to stay in white nations who are acting in a reasonable manner? Because I can assure anyone, if white people went to Israel and created chaos and did things which weren't conducive to the Jewish state, they'd be asked to leave. And there wouldn't be a single Jew who was crying and moaning about it. We, we, we actually have those people here. They're called NGOs. They're sent here by uh, <laughs> European governments. And, and yes, we're having a political debate right now about how fast and how many of them we can chuck out. And as far as I'm concerned, as many of them as possible. But the, the issue is that is European money. Your money, um, unfortunately, your taxpayer money, for example, goes to the Palestinian Authority, who then hands it over to the two men who tried to murder my friend. They pay her salary. The, 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 
Listen, I'm a bit of a free speech extremist. I don't like throwing around terms like anti-Semitism or hate speech and stuff. I just don't think these are concepts that the West should actually have. So that's just to counter uh, what Rafi was saying. Um, the, the, the issue, though, is you, you're inclined to believe. That I, this is something I struggle with all the time because I, you know, I've been on the edge of the Trump movement in America, and I know that's not your thing, Mark, but, you know, Trump... The, the alt-right people who at first thought Trump was okay and now they've soured on him completely, um, every single bad article or, or like I was saying, from Haaretz, even the Jerusalem Post, there's a lot of bad stuff there. It, every negative opinion you have of Israel, that we're genociding Palestinians despite the massive climb in their birth rate, um, despite the fact that there are more, you know, millions actually more Palestinians than there were in 1948, and yet we've been genociding them since then because we are really the worst genociders in the world. Um, despite every sort of bad source of information on Israel, turns out to be ones that you would consider unreliable on almost every other subject you like. And that, that's a conundrum to me. It's like you'll believe Haaretz really is much worse than the Guardian. I, I can't explain to you how bad Haaretz is. Um, and you'll believe everything that suits your agenda that you find in it. I mean, I look at The Guardian now and I don't believe a single thing in it I, without going and verifying anything. They're, they're, you know, Even if I found by some miracle an article in the New York Times that matched everything I thought, I'd double check it 15 times. But that's just a, 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 you know, my opinions of the media. This this constant desire to only blame Jews. This is what other things could possibly have gone wrong in white European white. I mean, if the white European countries, all of these different diverse Western European countries that have gone wrong: France, Germany, the EU in general. Is it only the Jews? Or is there some... I've never said that. I've said the Jews are disproportionately overrepresented in anti-Western activities. And, and, and that's what about the Western activities? What about the Westerners who do take part in anti-Western activity? Are they just schlubs of the Jews? Are they just following the orders of, some, of a small number of Jews? Or, or is there something bigger going on? Is there an anti-Western, an anti-civilizational movement that is bigger than Jews and bigger than all the European peoples. And, and that picking one scapegoat because of a mild overrepresentation, does that get you anywhere? Does that move your can down the road? And does that help your cause in saving Western civilization for Christendom? Well, like I've said, many of these things, cultural Marxism, the founding fathers of cultural Marxism, which has basically been at the centre of this social revolution, this anti-white... Is the Catholic revolution. Church, by the way, Jewish? Because, I, I, to be honest, I see the Catholic Church as a leading cause of cultural Marxism today. Oh, right. and, and, and I think that the Catholic Church is also... But you're not answering the question. You're being very sneaky here. You're being very fine. You're not answering the question. Why were... The people behind cultural Marxism, those oh, from the Frankfurt right. schools, exclusively Jewish. You only have to go on Wikipedia and, and, and type in list of Jewish I, feminists. I know, I know, I know. And there's dozens and dozens I of names. I'm not undermining the right family unit. It's not the game, the game, guys, because it's, 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 it's turning into a bit of a search. It's turning into a debate about culture of critique, which is very boring and has been done a million times. The great book critique is just wrong. In many, many places, it's been widely debunked, and it's easy to debunk. Yeah, and and it just, it does. I think we're just missing the wood for the trees here, and it was touched on by Rafi. And the most concerning thing for me is two things that both um, Ralph and Mark have said. So you're defining an identity around whiteness. Mark, sorry to say this, mate, I'm whiter than you. Way whiter. You look more Jewish than I look. I <laughs> I've got English ancestry. You've got what you would call a big Jewish nose. I've got a smaller nose than you. I've got a Catholic blood. I've got a nice ginger beard. You've got dark Turkish hair. Maybe you're a Khazar. Maybe you're an Ashkenazi Jew. Maybe like you. It, it's absurd what you're proposing because what you're saying is we're going to take this loose category of skin pigment. 
because you're not talking about culture. You have very little in common, Mark, very little in common with a so with a, a white person from... Can I answer this when you finish? Yeah, yeah please, you, please, you can. I, once, once I've finished. With a white person from America. Culturally, a Hispanic person living in America has more in common with a white person in America than you do. We have more in common with each other, Mark, because we were both raised in the UK. I was raised in a working class pit village. I have white family members, white English and white Irish family members. And the whole argument breaks down because you're not talking about culture. English culture is incredible. The English people have added so much value to the world. It's a phenomenal country that we live in and has incredible values. And those values and those contributions are not just from white people. They're from the diverse people that live here. So I work in a company which has a diverse workforce. From the board all the way down to the, the lower workers, you have diversity of color. You have diversity of culture. And that's what makes this nation a great nation. And so when you start arbitrarily saying, we're going to set the categorization of people at skin color, and then you start saying, we're going to forcibly remove people that aren't with people who have the right skin pigment, which you didn't say, Mark, but Ralph did say. Um, no, no, I'm saying you didn't say that, Mark. Ralph did say. So my question, my, my, the real question I want to pose to you is 20% of the UK, maybe more now, are not white. The overwhelming majority of them will not want to go because many of them have either been living here for generation after generation after generation, or they've come here because they want to buy into the British life. They admire British values and they want to take those on. They want the freedoms that enable me and you. I consider you to be a Nazi. You consider yourself to be a Nazi sympathizer. I've heard you saying that. Here I am, a Jew and a Nazi. Disgusting because we live in a free society where we can do that. And that's what attracts many people to this country is the freedom, the incredible freedom that it offers. So my question to you is, what happens when I say I don't want to leave? I don't agree with your worldview. I'm ideologically opposed to you. I live in here. I have English ancestors. What happens when I don't want to go? Well, firstly, there's two things I want to address here. One of the things I said I wanted a chance to reply to, firstly, you say that white people aren't this big amorphous group. And I actually agree with you. There are people from other European nations um, who have different cultures, different traditions to us here in England. However, they have far more in common with us in England than people from Somalia, from people from Kenya, than people from Saudi Arabia or Syria or Libya. And the problem is the flood of immigrants coming in to white countries are immigrants from places that have very little in common with us and will not ever assimilate. And that's why you're seeing these problems in places like London. And the fact is, I am not going to go around with a big board and say, do you, do you look the correct shade of white? That's a nonsense. You're reducing my point to ridicule. I'm certainly not suggesting anything such as DNA tests. Now, if you don't want to leave, I'm not going to force you to leave. What I'm going to do is I'm going to institute a policy much like the one that the Israeli government has actually floated of giving people generous financial incentives to leave the UK and to return to their country of origin. But you know what else we're going to give people in the UK? We're going to give them something called equality. And as a Jew, you should really like equality. But what I mean by equality is it's going to be actually equal. It's not going to be whites or seventh class citizens and immigrants get free interpreters and immigrants get put first on the council housing list and immigrants get extra benefits and immigrants can walk out of work and get straight on the benefits ladder without having to wait months because they're immigrants and because they can't speak English. People will be treated equally. And those who come here and those who want to take advantage of our system will be offered £15,000 per passport to leave. And they'll be, we'll even throw in a free one-way ticket. Because I'll tell you what, if there was genuine equality in the UK, if there was genuine equality, people wouldn't be flooding here. Mark, the average salary in the UK is £24,000. Have you even thought about the numbers you're proposing? 
The average, yeah. average salary in the UK is £24,000. And you think people are going to take £15,000 to go to a less developed country? Have you yeah, even thought about your ideology? I've also thought this through. Because once you start taking... Remember, away, remember, I got into it for a second. I got to head out. I got to head out. Because the only other budget that you bonus is given to these migrants, they wouldn't be getting huge amounts of money from the state. They wouldn't be suckling at the teeth of the state. And it would be very financially wise for them to leave as soon as possible. Because the fact is, we have built in this country an immigration industry that makes it extremely financially lucrative for people from all over the world, especially those um, who can't speak English, people from Africa, people from the Middle East, to flood in here and take us for a ride. And I am saying the ride is over. Now, obviously, Joseph, you earn significantly more. You probably own your own house. You don't need an interpreter. And I'm guessing that you don't live off our benefit system. So, of course, you'd be welcome to say, I have never, ever said I've not said here once that we will go for forced repatriation of anybody. However, if you push anti-Western narratives, I certainly won't take away your free speech. But I'll tell you this, I will push back and I will also repeal these bogus hate speech laws and restrictions on free speech that prevent white people from pushing back against anti-Western narratives. To that point, Mark, let's say I am on benefits and I speak English and I've got Jewish ancestry. What happens? If if you, how do you, who qualifies for benefits? Like, how are you going to determine I speak English? I'm an ethnic minority. How are you going to determine if I get benefits or not? People get benefits on the basis of who's paid in. You know, they, they give a penny, take a penny tray. You can't be the group of people that are abusing the give a penny, take a penny tray. If you're already take, if you're always taking pennies and you're never giving pennies, there's nothing left in the tray. And the fact is, the benefit system in the UK has gone from being a safety net to a hammock, and so that hammock is filled to bursting with migrants. White, be white English people that have been on benefits their entire life, will they get their benefits cut? White people who have been on benefits for their entire life are people that have an ancestral claim to this land. You have talked about the Jewish ancestral claim to Israel, and we will look after them because they are family. However, people who want to abuse the benefit system, who are white English, will be forced to retrain and will be forced to do something productive with their time. Because we don't want a nation full of sink estates. We don't want a nation full of people. Who who the, who are, who's with, you've got no one. You've got a large following of Americans. Who is we? You don't represent the English people. If you did, you would be in power. The fact is you were left out of the BMP. You were pushed out of the BMP. And you've got no platform now. You've got no political platform. You'd never stand for office because you'd never get votes. Like, you keep talking about we, but who's we? Well, just to be fair there, just Joseph, because you did accuse me of something. I didn't suggest at any point, just obvious things, that I would have people deported because of skin color. I said, I'd, 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 I'd have them deported. And if you're a whitey. No, not because they're whitey. I wouldn't care if they were, I wouldn't care if they were for the nation. And I think when Mark spoke to his last point, just for the first time of even this, if you look at other countries, let's look at successful ethno states in the world, look at Japan, look at India, they have what we call, and to diffuse the language, native nationalism. I, as a brown skinned man, do not get preference over Indians in India because I'm going to go against the one drop rule. They're like, no, we look after first our own. The Japanese do this, everyone else does. So I think there'd be nothing wrong. For example, or immoral, at least I'd like to hear very good arguments as to why it would be immoral for the ethnic English to potentially have weighted by schemes that are not the same for a Somalian or Jehoda. I don't think that is racist. I think what is racist, or what maybe the point that gets conflated, is immigrants coming in without a native nationalist basis are somehow equal. And Joseph, with a decent respect and love, I, you know, I reject liberalism and the Enlightenment. I don't believe people are equal. I don't believe that we have this in, in endowed equality. I think equality comes in a place in a space. So I think the Japanese have a preferential bias for Japan. Japan should look up to the Japanese, not exclusively, but at least in some way over the other. So I think we can get and solve a lot of our problems by saying some types of people 
are not compatible with others. This is not a white problem. This is not an English problem. Other countries feel that. The North Koreans feel it to the South Koreans. Indians feel it to ba Pakistanis and Bangladeshis. If you go across Central America, the Nicaraguans feel it to the other uh, people next door to them. So some way, some way of preferentially looking after your own, I don't think is an immoral thing. And I don't think, I think Mark, I've watched Mark since perhaps 2001. And I, I remember the young Mark. And I believe Mark has perhaps softened himself. I think Mark's problem, on the other hand, the challenge Mark is blaming the Jews for the problem is actually not looking at home. You know, the Jews are not responsible for the English malaise, right? You can't blame them. You can say they're working against the interests of the solution, but they're not responsible, Mark, surely. They're not responsible for the, for the degradation of that. That must be the loss of the church, right? It can't be anything else, right? I've already stated my case on this, and there's no point in me restating the case endlessly. I have said many, many people are responsible for the fall of white Christian Europe. But Jews are an overrepresented minority amongst those people. And I have defined that from the offset and I have presented evidence. But what I will say, I'm a bit disappointed with you, Joseph, because you seem to have got very angry and you, you seem to be, you know, throwing sort of personal insults at me about who are the we, who are the we? Well, the chat there, the chat is full of the we, full of people here who've come to hear me speak tonight. And we've been very respectful towards you. So I think you should at least uh, you know, extend that courtesy to me. But you have to remember, I may stand alone in some cases, and you may paint me as an isolated um, radical, as you're trying to. However, the reason I am isolated is because my people are terrified. The reason I am isolated is because millions and millions of white British people are scared to speak their mind. Because when somebody like John Cleese simply says, London doesn't feel English anymore, he's attacked, he's pilloried, he's ripped down, he's torn to shreds, he's called a racist. Because if you are white and you state even the mildest condemnation for this anti-white multicultural society, you're attacked on the most grotesque personal level. And if you ask why aren't more white people doing things with that very smug look on your face that you like to have when you ask that question, <laughs> I've just defined that perfectly. People Joseph aren't doing things smug. they're scared. I don't know who I talk to, I promise them. That's going to be at home, right? Is that what you're accusing me of doing, Mark? Maybe you could be polite as well. Um, <laughs> you know, Mark, the reality is, you're stuck in the past. The, the majority of Britain, I'm from the north, I travel the country. You're politically isolated, not because people are afraid. It's because people don't share your racist worldview. They really don't. Britain is an incredibly liberal nation. It always has been. Hayek said back in the 50s, back in the 50s, Hayek said, if fascism were to take root in the United Kingdom, it would be a very liberal form of fascism. It's a liberal nation. We smashed the black shirts at Cable Street, and we have a tradition of not being on the far right. And that's why you're politically isolated. That's why you, the, the noise that we have in the live chat, you're right, you've brought a lot of people to the channel, but they're all Americans. Like your, your entire worldview revolves around America. You talk about pornography, you talk about media, you talk about all these things, yet all your reference points are America. Because your argument, your ideology, your philosophy only exists in America, and it only exists in America because America's a large enough population to accommodate a sizable fringe. It, no, you're just, the deepest, 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 deepest respect, and let me just interject, because you know, I appreciate it as an extreme Christian, I'm compelled by Christ to love. I would have to disagree with you there. The amount I speak at Speakers Club every Sunday, and the amount of messages I get from support from white people telling the skinny brown boy that I'm stating what they can't say is ridiculous. So there's an undercurrent that Mark does brush with that boy. And it's larger than what you think it is. It's much, much larger than that. I think it has no political force, maybe a not political voice yet, but it's definitely rising. And I get this from messages from people I don't even know just because I can put, use my brown privilege to speak about things that can't be said. Joseph is right too. The country has traditionally been, you know, at least in the liberal centrist part, but that change is rapidly, I believe, it's changing. And I believe just, I can just measure this in the six months I've been to Speaker's Corner by the amount of messages I get constantly saying, Mark might be able to back me up, he's much more connected. They just say, I can't believe you're saying what I'm thinking. That is a constant message. It's and a where, 
then where's the popular movement? I don't tell you where the popular I'd say the popular movement is closer on something. You know, the reason I've been friendly with Tommy Robinson all these years is because he just doesn't come with the racist point. Um, he doesn't come with a race-based view of Britain. Uh, he's happy with friends of all shades, but he does have an understanding of what Britain, and more specifically, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, uh, what those countries are and what their identity should be and what should be acceptable in those countries and what shouldn't be acceptable. And so without the racist component, I believe he's much more likely to be successful because I don't think that the British are all that racist. Yeah. I don't think, I think they'll judge people on character as our friend with rivers of blood, you know, and, and you know, Enoch Powell, there was a lot right in what he said. His, his forecasts of the future were correct, but, but, you know, what to do about it, slightly wrong perhaps, that there is a populist movement, it is coming, um, Brexit, there was a huge component to Brexit that was immigration based. Uh, and I agree. I, I think Britain should be in charge of its immigration policy. I don't think native Brits ever voted for mass immigration, mass uncontrolled immigration. Um, but yet I still think that your English identity is bigger than white. White is a red herring. I think, I think Rastafarians who have arrived from, from Jamaica and integrated are perfectly capable of being Englishmen, and 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 that's where that's a direction you should be going in is strengthening an identity that is not racially pure. You're still going to be racially quite pure anyway, because if you got immigration under control from today, you would have a reasonable shot. But and, and listen, I'm not averse to you saying you should be making the country hostile to the hostile elements of Islam that have moved into your country. You should make it such that if people want to follow extreme forms of Islam, if they want to wear burqas, if they want to segregate, you should make that unpleasant to do in Britain. But then, I'm all for that. But the idea is, it's not a race thing. It's ideologies you need to look at. No, but not quite. Just a quick point on that, Brian. It's this. If I look at the maybe three to 5,000 rough sets of messages that I've filtered out, People say the following thing to me. It's not just populist, it's nativist. I'm not speaking for a British value. I'm speaking for the white English ethnicity. And when they turned to me and said, gosh, you spoke for me. You are my brother. I then remind them as a race realist, I could never be their brother. I could be their brother in arms. And they get even closer to saying, thank God you can't, you're, you're honest to not call me your brother. Mark and I could never be brothers. I could be allied as a brother in arms. And the relief that sets in that message tells me there is a huge racial component underpinning the nativist populist rising. It is not purely racialist. It is not purely racist. So the British and the English are fair people. But it is definitely based on don't call yourself English when you're not and let me be English. And that uh, Listen, today right. I was watching the England play Afghanistan. You know, I was... Not that there was much to root for in the cricket. Not that there was much to root for because it was a rout. But um, obviously, my affinity lies towards England. I have, I have a strong like for the place because I grew up there. However, however, I, I don't consider myself an Englishman, especially now that I've left. It, it's Identity is an interesting and complex thing, but pinning it to race is going to lead you down a dead end, and it's going to... To, to destroy any, any wider populism that you could get. Brian, why does it have to be exclusively race? It could just be partially race, right? So let me give you an example. I feel for the English national anthem, and I can sing it. But the first line of the second verse says, one realm of races four. I am not a member of the four races. So I could never feel the same thing the four races do. Acknowledging it is okay. It doesn't mean I'm going to seek Ireland 1488 down the street. I don't well, that's, but that, that then is the problem with, you know, the fact that as soon as Mark declares himself to be at least, uh, I don't know, I don't know his exact words on Nazism, but that to me is totally, it. you know, it's not, I'm not going to throw anti-Semite and all that crap, but it makes 
anything that comes out of your mouth be valued. Then you come with the Jews control the world, Jews, which I know from my own experience is just not true. Then you come with a whole load of stuff about Israel that I also know not to be true. And I literally know the agendas of the journalists who write that crap. And so I can just, I do personally just dismiss you. That's why, like I say, I've worked with Tommy for a lot, for a lot of years because I know it's different there. That's it. Um, and I'm probably going to be out soon, from a time point of view because it's late. Yeah, I, I just want to say, to listen. race is definitely a component. There is definitely an, uh, an ethnic component to being English. There's definitely an ethnic component to being English, just as there's an ethnic component to being Jewish. You know, that's why these rabbis were suggesting DNA testing. But one thing, I, first, there's two things I really want to um, address. First, one is from Joseph and one is from Brian. But Joseph said you know, that no one's listening to me, that basically I'm alone, I'm isolated. But if no one's listening to me, why are YouTube desperately censoring my channel? If no one's listening to me, why is Facebook deciding that I can't say anything on their platform? If no one's listening to me, why do special laws need to be drafted from, to prevent me speaking? If no one's listening to me, then there wouldn't be all these people trying to stop me from speaking. You see, if I see a madman walking down the street ranting that we should all uh, put custard in our shoes, can complete mute Judas again? Every time I try to speak, he, he, enables, he enables his mic and then allows this hissing. Oh, I'm sorry. If I walk down the street and I see a madman on the street corner suggesting we should all put custard in our shoes because that will that will make our shoes work better and we'll all live more comfortable lives, I don't want to censor him. I'll just laugh at him. The reason you are seeing such great censorship of people like me, especially on this platform, is because what we're saying is the truth and it's winning over millions of people. Now, the fact of the matter is YouTube was meant to be an open and fair platform where debate was going to be not only tolerated but pushed to the forefront. They only wanted to cancel the debates when people like me started winning them. And one thing I want to say for Brian, do you know, Brian, I'm actually quite happy you came on tonight. And do you know why? Because you expressed something a moment ago that actually I want, I'm happy for you. Because you said something very interesting. You said you, brought, you were brought up in London, yes? And now it's full of people that you don't feel a home around, that you don't feel that you can be around. And you no, no, I, I, I specifically knew that I wouldn't be able to raise Jewish children in London um, without putting myself into a Jewish ghetto. And that, that's something very different to what, what, what you can do here in Israel, which is that you can raise largely secular but still culturally Jewish children. But you retreated, about you retreated to Israel because you felt at home there. It was a place for you. And you feel yeah. at home and you feel happy in Israel, yes? Yes. And I'm happy for you. Well, you where, should be. Where did the English go? Where did the English go? When London, that was the, that was the point that Katie Lawton was making. When all these places go the same way as London, Birmingham, Bradford, and Leicester, we don't have a little place in the Middle East surrounded by a nice big wall where we can fly out to. And yes, it's not messing your country up, but really right. blaming the Jews is just not going to let you win. So he addressed one of those points to me. So I just like to point out one thing, Mark: getting your videos censored isn't a sign that you're popular. If you posted <laughs> pornography. It would be censored. I've lost six videos. That's more of a Jewish thing. I've lost six. You're the one who researches it all the time, mate. I, you've got the obsession, not me. I'm a religious Jew. Um, so I've lost six videos this week alone. I'm constantly being censored. I'm a Zionist. I, my Zionist content gets censored by YouTube. Yeah. Mine Cens too. I mean, all, all my Tommy stuff is being taken down all the time. And censorship means nothing. It's not a sign that you're popular. It's a sign that you're violating the term of whatever social policies the organization is part of. Hey guys, can, can, I, uh, can I address Mark with a question at some point? Yeah, I just want to, to, to... Okay, yeah, I'd ask you a question, Judas. All right, um, Mark, I'm coming here from a completely different angle, okay? I'm very sympathetic to the alt-right positions. I'm sympathetic to the desire of any nation to have a space of their own where they can pursue their own destiny and their own identity. I don't think Israel is a is a ethnostate per se, but we're similar enough to an, an ethnostate in the sense that when you say things like, where will the British go when England gets overrun by third world savages, 
I kind of understand and I feel for you. And I want England to be a place that's safe for white people. I want there to be other European countries that are safe for Europeans. I am completely on your side and on the other gentleman here, um, who I think already left, and his side as well. But my question to you is as follows. Um, you would admit that the Jews are a formidable race, religion, ethnic group. We are a formidable group of people. And it's natural for any minority in a country to be more on the left. So what you would call the more cocked Jews will end up in places like London, usually, besides for Joseph and a few others. Now, the more base Jews, the more right-wing nationalist Jews will end up in Israel. It's reasonable for Israeli Jews to vote for right-wing governments, where American Jews vote for, if they were in Israel, they would vote for Israeli left-wing uh, uh, people. Now, it, it, there's so many Jews like myself who are sympathetic to the need for white people to have a space of their own. Do you really want to be perceived as our enemy at every corner? Like, it's hard for me. I defend your position sometimes, and I get called a traitor and a cock by my own friends, which is why I'm here uh, without even uh, showing my real identity, because they would always say, look, you're on the side of people who admit to being Nazi sympathizers. They admit to, they blame Jews for everything. So, my question to you is, what would you, like, do you really want to put yourself in a position where you're perceived by the Jewish people as the enemy of the Jewish people, or do you want to be a little more complex in your views and understand that they're going to be Jews who are, um, yeah, they're going to be Jews who are on your side, and uh, you just got to let them be on your side? Well, I think that's an interesting question. And it really does tell us about the power dynamic that we have here, because you are saying to me, you know, are you going to get yourself into a position where you will oppose these very powerful people, this very powerful group, because it might lead to trouble for you? And unfortunately, this might not be the answer you want to hear. But yes, I am. Because if telling the truth and if standing up for the interests of those of European descent, puts me at loggerheads with the Jewish community, then so be it. Because I am not one of these kosher nationalists who intends to sell out my own people to please another. I am not going to bow and scrape and beg for my own survival or for the survival of my people. I am going to stand up for the survival of my people and I'm going to continue to tell the truth and I'm going to continue to push for those of European descent to take back their own destiny, regardless of who that offends. And when you talk about um, Jews clustering in the West and you claim, you know, this thing about Jewish power, it's just small groups of left-wing Jews in places like London. Well, still no one has touched the APAC elephant. I mean, APAC is the most powerful um, political pressure group in the whole of America. And let's, let's put it straight. If the I in APAC stood for Italian, it would be outlawed as a mafia organization. Oh, oh. So, no, wait, 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 wait. I would like to respond. I'd like to respond, Mark. Sorry, I just want to jump in there. Judas, I want to jump in there. Mark, so how powerful do you think APAC is? How much do you think they spend? Oh, I did a video on this. APAC themselves spend very little, but they ensure that their delegates run many other lobbying groups and it is run almost like an octopus so although APAC doesn't have huge amounts of funding itself when you look at the amount of lobbying money it controls through lobbies that aren't directly affiliated with APAC but are run by APAC members that totally changes the situation I did an entire video on this how and much? All this can be found in books and everything is referenced how much Watch my video on it. No, no, no. no. How, 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 how much do they spend? Let's have a conversation about APAC. How much do they spend? I've just said APAC themselves. Well, the, the lobbies they control, the organizations they control. How and much it's they not spend? about... Wait. You made a video. You know the amount. Tell us the amount. We don't know I the don't, amount. you got to tell us. I've just... I'm just explaining the way they wield their power. It's not just about the amount they spend, but it's about the amount they can concentrate in electoral races where anyone has said anything bad about Israel. Uh, it's, how, 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 did we, uh, how did we get Minnesota? Um, did we, did this we, is Minnesota and... Uh, anyone who doubts my claims, if my video isn't deplatformed by the end of the evening, 
please go. So I, I respond, Mark. I respond to your point. Do you know how much South Korea spends lobbying the American government last year? Eighty-four million. Why is it that you know how much and the exact intricacies of how Jewish lobby groups ob operate, but you haven't got a bloody clue about a country like South Korea? Japan, seventy-four million dollars they spent lobbying in America. And then you actually have the large lobby groups, like the National Association of Realtors, $560 million. General Electric spent $360 million. Lockheed Martin spent $260 million. But you don't look at these because it doesn't suit your racist worldview. And this is exactly what I told you. You look at the world and see the Jew behind everything. So if you don't like what's on the television, it's the Jew. Toilet doesn't flush properly. It's the Jews again. Literally, you see the hand of the Jew behind everything because you're insecure. You look up to okay, Mark, why are you obsessed with APEC? What do you care? Wait a second. That one, why is that important to you? There are so many countries wait, that are lobbying in the United States and in England. Some are better than others. And you know, here in the United States, if you say something against black people, you'll be deplatformed much faster than if you say something against Israel. So Israel is successful at lobbying for their own interests. It's one little country in the Middle East out of dozens who try their best to lobby and wield their power. Why does this upset you so much? Like last time I checked, you? shaping American foreign policy. Last time I checked, last time I checked, uh, America wasn't invading countries in the Middle East at the behest of South Korea. If you look at the way American policy is dictated, Israel has a massive say in that. And to deny that, to deny the power of APEC, what, what does when you have to do with Israel? bowing in front of APAC representatives at the APAC conference, that makes it phenomenally powerful. And you'd be much more respected, Joseph, if you just said, yes, we do have that power. And you know what, Mark? Maybe we shouldn't abuse it so much. So to that, well, to that point, what is years, APAC lobby that America would move the embassy to, to Jerusalem. And actually, frankly, it got all of these promises from politicians who all then failed to deliver because, you know, whatever, because reasons. Um, the first president who actually did this was Trump, who really was not supported at all by APAC. APAC basically are still predominantly left-wing Jews and predominantly anti-Trump, even though they try and sit on their hands mostly at the moment. Mark, more yeah, Jews in America, more, Mark, more Christians, more white Christians in America send money to Israel and support Israel than Jews. Jews in America are overwhelmingly to the left. They're for a two-state solution. They think Israel is too tough on the Arabs, whereas the Christian right, which is the base of the Republican Party, are more on the side of Israel and more attendant of APEC. Than, uh, than even American Jews. I think you kind of um, misconstrued this whole story. Yeah, and Jews, I was just going to jump in. So I think a point for that. We in the evangelical, and the, I count these people my friends, and I've worked with many of them in the U.S., we are the primary source of your funding for modern Israel. I, the gentleman is right. It's predominantly liberal Jews who, for example, Mark would dislike in the APAC stuff, but that's not where the source of the funding is. It's coming from us in the Christian far right because we have a different agenda to Israel. Joseph and I just had a little debate. Where, I mean, Joseph can school me in debates about Israel, but I was trying to make my case for a hard one ethno state put the arm to the teeth for Israel. But, and Joseph does not believe in such a thing. So I think it's unfair to think that it's just Jewish lobby power. It is Christian evangelical power in Israel. And that is a pure white. Those people doing that are not Jewish. And I'd just like to jump in and then Mark can respond. Um, yes. There's been a lot of people spoke before him. And yes. it's just, you mentioned something which I just can't let slide. You mentioned <laughs> that America is fighting wars for Israel in the Middle East. And so this wars really started with Afghanistan and 9-11. And so I'd like to know, why was it in Israel's interest for America to attack Afghanistan? Well, firstly, I just want to finalize the APAC point. If APAC and Israel didn't have all this power in America, why are a raft of states passing anti-boycott laws in America? You actually have a situation in America where a raft of different states 
are passing anti-freedom laws to prevent their citizens choosing not to buy Israeli goods and services. Now, that is extreme power. And as I said in my opening commentary, you actually have a situation here in the West where Western uh, Western citizens of Western nations can actually criticize their own countries. They can choose where to shop. They can choose where to give their money. But if they criticize Israel, if they criticize Zionism, or if they decide to engage in uh, boycotts of Israeli goods, they can actually be arrested. That is a very, very powerful indicator of the level of control Israel has over the West. And it's not just America. It's in France. It's in the UK. In the UK, they are trying to pass a law that suggests that if you question the loyalty of um, a, a Jewish citizen living in the UK who's got dual citizenship to Israel and the UK, if you question where his loyalties lie, that will be anti-Semitism. Well, that's insane. I mean, I'll just throw this out there. There's an article, well, it's not an article, it's actually the front cover of a uh, newspaper. It's a newspaper, it might be a newspaper, I think magazine would be more uh, more accurate. And I think it's The Economist, and the front cover has on it a picture of an octopus, and the head of the octopus is morphed into the face of Vladimir Putin. So Vladimir Putin is this octopus, and the headline is The Meddler claiming that Russia has this absolute influence on American politics. Can you imagine if somebody had sort of photoshopped uh, Netanyahu's head on the body of an octopus and described Israel as the meddler? They'd have been apologizing, they'd have been sacked, their career would have been ruined, yet Israel has a much larger influence on American politics than Russia does. And if you speak out against that influence, you are deplatformed. Now, that is extreme power, yet you deny this power. And, and I don't understand why you deny that power when there's so many people here in the chat that are agreeing with everything I say and are saying, well, that's a very salient point. The charge to you is, if APAC doesn't have this power, why can you be completely ruined for saying the same thing about Israel as the press regularly say about Russia? Okay, so I'll deal with the APAC comment first, or uh, the influence you believe that Jews have. So the overwhelming majority of APAC support base are evangelical Christians. It's in the tens of millions. The money, the lobbying, everything that you're talking about is evangelical Christians who have religious reasons for wanting Israel to operate in a certain way. They're not beholden to Jews. So um, there's an organization called Kufi, Christians United for Israel, which is very large in America. They have their own pastor. He sets the agenda. It's not always in line with what the Israeli government is. They have their own particular criteria and agenda. Now, anybody who researches the subject can very easily fact check that. And um, yeah, we're, we'll, cl we'll close at 11. So we'll do this and then we'll do closing comments and then um, we'll all wish each other good night. I'm oh, sorry. Um, someone just asked that we're closing at 11. <laughs> I got to answer out loud. So yeah, we'll be closing at 11 o'clock. Um, now, as regards to um, free speech, so I'm actually a free speech activist. So I believe we should be free to say a plethora of things unless we're inciting violence and inciting hatred. However, there is a distinction between Russia and Putin and an octopus with, a, say, a Jew's head on the front. And that's because yeah. no, 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 Mark, because you are familiar with Nazi propaganda. You're a big fan of the Third Reich. You're more than aware of the propaganda they would have created. And the Jews are a vulnerable minority within the West. We are a minority population. We've tried living under you guys. Sometimes it works amazingly. Sometimes it doesn't go so well. And as a consequence, there are, spe there, are, there are laws that the state puts in place to protect vulnerable minorities. And it's the same with transgender people. It's the same with LG. There's all kinds of laws that protect minorities. And uh, the, the long and short of it, you're familiar with Nazi propaganda. I'm familiar with Nazi propaganda. You know what the connotations are. You know why a cartoonist would draw that. So you don't need me to explain why that's potentially 
considered more insightful or dangerous than drawing Putin's head? Well, I think uh, I, I think that again is another another huge layer of absolute hypocrisy. And again, it's one rule for thee and another rule for me. And that's exactly what I've been trying to point out tonight. Um, and as I say, I'll, I'll now just pass it back over to you, and you're free to close this. And obviously, everyone's free to say good night. So I'll I'll ask again. So. Just a, one quick question to you, Mark, um, and then we'll, everyone can do closing comments and wish each other farewell. Um, Azar Ahmed said that British soldiers should die and go to hell. He was charged under Section 127 of the Communications Act of two, 2003. That's the same piece of legislation which deals with hate speech that's directed at Jews or at any other community. If, do you think that that statement, British soldiers should die and go to hell, should be legal and people should be free to say that? I just want to understand where you sit on the free speech scale. I think if people want to say things like that, as much as I find them distasteful, I certainly wouldn't send somebody to jail for simply speaking their mind. However, if somebody... If somebody is espousing views like that, that are anti-British in Britain, I would suggest that Britain isn't the best place for them to live. It's as simple as that. I want people to have the right to speak their mind. But I acknowledge when certain people say viciously anti-British or anti-white things may be living in a Britain, which is a nation built by white European people is maybe not the best place for them. And I think you as a free speech, a fan of free speech, and I believe Brian of London's a fan of free speech, and so is Judas, and so is uh, Rafi. Everyone here tonight has been very welcoming, and I thank you all for that. But I think we would all agree that if there was somebody in Israel who wasn't, uh, didn't have any ancestral claim to Israel and was saying similar hateful things about Israel, I would say they should have the right to say that. But I would say maybe Israel isn't the best place for them. And I think that's a fair point that I hope we can all agree on. Well, we, we have a number of writers at the uh, esteemed journal Haaretz who actually do say hateful things about Israel. And I'm really unsure as to why Gideon Levy and uh, um, some others actually still live in Israel. So, uh, you know, that point is taken. Um, yeah, uh, I would just tell you that if you carry on, well, you're bound to. I'm not changing your mind here, but there are more productive ways to save Britain uh, and ways that I think you should be learning a lot more from Israel and from Jews than by railing against a conspiracy that is largely invented. In It just invented. I mean, I, I was just... So trying to find out if there were non-Jew, if there were Jews who had actually started some of the political movements that you'd like, like libertarianism apparently um, has got quite a lot of Jews who have started it. Um, there are lots of Jews on the right in American politics now today as well. Um, you know, they're doing good things. Um, there are also Jews doing bad things. I just think it's the Jew element is not as important as you think when it comes to this. And, and to get all your information about Israel from the sources that you choose uh, is going to lead you down a path of, of just looking for the same messages that reinforce a view that's in your head about uh, control, which really and truly we, we don't have. We're not, as, we, we would like, we're not as big as you would like us to be. Uh, and I, you know, anyway, I wish you the best of luck in saving Britain. I think, I think your approach is probably wrong. I think other people have a better approach. Uh, I don't, at this point, I really hope it can be saved because I'd like my British citizen kids to be able to go back and visit sometime. Um, but I don't think you in particular with a, a, an anti-Jewish agenda that is so strong and with this white identity that is, I think, largely cobbled together, rather like the Palestinian identity we, we deal with here, 
I think that you you will lead your country. If you got the chance to lead your country, it would be to, to just the same destruction that it's heading to at the moment underneath a left-wing leadership. Thanks just, very much. And I do appreciate that we've kept this reasonably civil. I think we have. Look, I just want to leave you with this quote then. It's by a Jewish anti-racist activist, Tim Wise. He said this, You white people are on an endangered list. And unlike, say, the bald eagle or some exotic species of muskrat, you are not worth saving. In 40 years or so, maybe fewer, there won't be any more white people around. And that's a good thing. Now, wait a second. I've not finished. I didn't interrupt your closing statement. He may be a lunatic, as you said, and I'd probably agree with that. He's a lunatic who is actually calling for and celebrating the genocide of white people. But he is allowed to do that with complete immunity on platforms like Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. The fact is, if I had come here tonight and said something as egregious, as terrible, as insulting as Tim Wise has said about white people, and I came on here and said something about Jewish people that was as insulting and genocidal as that that Tim Wise says about white people, I would have been arrested. I would have been arrested. And the fact of the matter is, there is a power structure in the Western world that allows those of Jewish descent to say these genocidal things about white people. And I don't think it's wrong or negative or evil of me to oppose the destruction of my people. I don't want the destruction of your people. I don't want to come to Israel and tear down your border wall. I don't want to tell any other race or any other people anywhere in the world what they can and can't do. I'm happy for them to have their homelands and take their destiny in their own hands. But I want the same for my people. I want a future for my children in the lands of their forefathers. And if that to some people on the panel, makes me a racist, makes me an anti-Semite, makes me a Nazi, then so be it. Because if people are going to castigate me for fighting for my own survival, that says more about them than it does about me. But again, thank you for having me on tonight. Thank well, you for well, making well, well, the debate. Well, 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 can I just close my statement this way? It might help. Because I came here because Joseph asked me to kind of bridge this difference. And I'll close by saying this. I think all of us must secure an existence of English people and a future for English children. We must all do that for the English people and the English children. The question is going to be, are the Jewish people your friends or not? And if you came at the Jewish people only seeing them as a monolithic enemy, then you're probably going to lose your best ally in the fight for the 40 words. So you must differentiate those that are friends, those that are potential allies, from a ubiquitous enmity. And again, I would just close on that. We must secure the existence of all Jewish people in the future for Jewish children, like we will do for the English people. That's me. Do you have anything to add, Judas, or should I say my comments? You're muted. Okay. I'll be very short. I have one thing to add. I'm going to say that unlike the gentleman that uh, Mark um, uh, quoted earlier. I definitely want English people and the white race to survive and to prosper. I would also say that we Jews, and in fact all of humanity, owe a lot to the many contributions that white people have made to the human race. The last thing the human race needs is to have less white people. We need more white people. And I consider myself an ally of these people. That being said, um, it troubles me that whenever I'm in a space of white advocates and white nationalists, it appears that they perceive of me as a Jew, as a proud Jew, and a Jewish nationalist who's interested in the survival of my people as well as the survival of all other people, specifically whites, that I'm, that I'm uh, sorry, that's my kid, I'm driving my kid to school. Um, uh, specifically uh, whites, um, it, it, I just don't, I just find it a bit odd that I'm always perceived that as automatically as an enemy. And it would be nice if that was changed. But that being said, 
I still uh, will hold my views because I think they're correct and they're just. And that would be it. Joseph? You're on mute, Joseph. Joseph, you're on. I can see you taking notes, Dan. Would you like to add anything, Mark? <laughs> Okay. No, I just want to thank you again, and I want to say that peaceful discourse, peaceful discourse, yeah. debate, and discussion is the best way forward. And I hope that everyone who's watched this tonight, regardless of what side of the fence they're on, can agree that open platform debates like this, where we sit around a table and we are largely cordial and act in a decent manner, is the best way for everyone. So, Mark, I'd like to invite myself to your channel. I want to have I want to have a discussion with you on your channel about the JQ. Did right. you invite me on? <laughs> I think if I had a discussion with you on my channel, I don't think I'd have a channel. Um, Why? So, 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 I'm the nicest guy. No, no. If he's talking about what, what, what he would say, what you would say in response, I'm sure, I'm sure you're, you're a lovely guy, Judas. Um, so what I'd like to, to add, uh, first and foremost, we did invite Mark onto the panel. Um, and there was a little bit of finger wagging and some raised voices, but I think we got through it, and we definitely think all of us diametrically opposed to each other. So, yeah, I, I'd like to thank everyone for taking part. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who's given a super chat donation. I would like to say to all those white ethno nationalists, every single penny that you've just given <laughs> is going to go straight to Israel. So, thank you. Um, I, I guess my closing comment would be it's one thing we've kind of overlooked throughout the discussion. Um, and it's really how Israel came to, to be entered, how, how it came into existence. And Israel was born on the back of a very dangerous ideology. The Jews were um, persecuted in Nazi Germany. I know even you, Mark, won't deny that there was persecution of the Jews. We'll maybe disagree to the extent that that went. But neither of us will deny that there was persecution there. There was persecution of Jews in the Arab world. Over a million Jews fled from Muslim lands to Israel. And so Israel was born out of necessity. Necessity that we were persecuted, we were attacked. And so one of the things I would encourage everyone in the, the live chat, in the chat stream, I've never seen so much anti-Semitism in my life. And I've been doing this a lot. I've discussed with Anjum Chowdhury, I've discussed with jihadis who have been to Syria and never experienced the level of Jew hatred that's going on in the live stream here. And so my, my closing comment are, is Israel was born out of the mentality and the vitriol and the hatred that I'm experiencing in the chat room now. And I wouldn't... Like, <laughs> I would reach out to you, Mark, as a leader in your movement to look at the chat comments, to look at the, the hatred, to the death threats, to the violence that's going on in there, because you are responsible for that. You're not responsible for what happened in Nazi Germany, but you are responsible for the influence that you have over your American following. You have a bigger following than we do, that's for sure, on YouTube. You have 90,000 people that tune into your YouTube channel. With a lot of people comes a lot of responsibility. And with the things that you push, there are serious consequences to those. There have been school and synagogue shootings in America from people on the far right. And so there is a big... I'm not saying you are directly responsible for those shootings, but the, the politics that you push and the lies that you peddle do have real-world consequences on me and my people. And so, as you said before, with great power comes great responsibility. So with great YouTube power comes great YouTube responsibility. <coughs> and I will let you respond to that if you want to have another I just want to say, I just want to say, does the same apply to the dozens and dozens, if not hundreds or even thousands of Jews on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube that push white guilt, the lie of white privilege and other anti-white forms of mental torture that make white people hate themselves and paint them as the most evil people on the planet <laughs> and, in, and empower certain uh, people of colour to attack, wound, kidnap, uh, and do horrific things to white people. Because when I read things on Twitter, when I read things on Twitter from um, 
you know, Jewish sources. And there are so many, there are so many of these people put, tweeting out so much hatred for white people. Who's going to hold them to account? Who's going to say to them, well, you know, you need to stop doing that? Because you said with great power comes great responsibility. Well, I can bring up... Um, infographics like I'm about to bring up now. So just bear with me one second. I mean, it's, it's late, but let's let's have a look at this. I'm sharing this screen now. I hope you can all see it. And if I zoom in on this, um, you see things. No, white people are the worst. But that's right. How about saying I called Jews stingy when I'm Jewish and was clearly mocking the sentiment? Yeah, but those are anti-Zionist Jews who hate Israel. They're not, you can't and the same argument, fighters I are hate that. I, I would just add to that, Mark. I think anybody who says that they hate white people is racist. It's, it's true. Everybody in Sweden cannot consume enough. Look at all of these people here saying things. Maintaining are you sure it's random? Are you sure it's random uh, people on, on no, Twitter I'm saying sure don't think? Verified Twitter accounts. Verified Twitter accounts. Are they Jewish? Yes, Teddy Greenstein, watching the help. Man, I hate white people. Benny Blanco, another Jew. I hate white people. Below. Yeah, we deplore that. That is deplorable. But, but what I'm so saying is many white don't... people say the same thing. And this Mark, is not a... Mark, you, you basically spent the entire interview talking about Jew, uh, not interview, sorry, life stream, talking about white Jewish privilege and Jewish this and Jewish that. You're doing the very thing you're angry at this group of people for doing. So I will outright say, well, I think white privilege is the stupidest concept in the world. I grew up in a working class white village in the north of England. They had no privilege. I didn't go to university. I haven't got the qualifications of many of non-white people in the UK who are far more privileged than I do coming from a white working class village in the north of England. So I'm not going to sit here and defend the concept of um, white privilege. Anybody who expressed anti-white racism is racist. It's very easy for me and anyone on this panel to say that. Um, so, so, yeah, I absolutely condemn yeah, we all, we all, that. We all condemn that. My question, though, is are you that racist to assume that white people are so dumb that Jews can control their minds and tell them what to think? That's troubling to me. I have a much higher opinion of white people, Mark. I don't think white people are that controllable, that they're all sheep, and they hate themselves because some Jew in a dark room sits with another Jew and plans the media and, and sets them up to hate himself. That, to me, is very disparaging and condescending to a race that I believe has brought so much good to humanity and has come up with so many great inventions. Mark, I'm a little bit bothered by that. You know, it's, it's, it's nice to hear Jewish people stand on the side of the alt right and the white right. I think that's the way. I know Joseph is shocked, though. I obviously am very comfortable with lots of the names I'm seeing here in the live chats. Lots to see a lot of the boys are here, the acolytes are off. But I believe Joseph is genuinely shocked. And the solution to Joseph's shock is that more people like Judah say, Yes, I understand the plight, I understand the hatred. And that's the only way to solve that problem, right? Otherwise, it's going to get escalating, right? It's, it's not going to. You know, I'll just come back. I just want to just challenge Joseph. Listen, come on. Israel was established. You know, Israel was well on the way to being established long before the, the Shoah. So I don't like the idea that Israel why, was established. Why did, why did Herzl write the, the oh. Jewish state? Why did all these? What were they writing about? They were writing about escaping persecution. Correct. Correct. But and that's why Israel Israel exists to to make sure that doesn't happen again. It doesn't exist because it happened that time. Um, we, you know, we, it's happened all these other times. It's just, we're back to the same point. If you choose to blame Jews for everything, you will never look inside and work out what is what you need to fix about your own things. Uh, and that's, that's the negative place that you'll be. You've got to look for a more positive place, which is what can I do? What can we do to make our identity, our societies, our nation stronger again? Uh, and, and I don't think that the negative backward looking um i'll blame jews because of something i read in a book that the czars dreamt up is going to work for everyone but and that really is my final word because it's 1 10 in the morning and my air conditioning has gone off on its timer and i'm about to melt 
Perfect. So unless someone has something to add, I think we can wrap it up on that note. Thank you. Thanks everyone in the live chat. Love the comments. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to George. Archive those. Bye. Bye.